हेलो स्टूडेंट्स आई एम डॉक्टर अमोल रहाने वेलकम्स यू टू द कोर्स फिजिक्स प्रिंसिपल्स एंड एप्लीकेशंस फॉर एफ फिजिक्स पेपर टू सेमिस्टर वन सो वी आर स्टडिंग फिफ्थ चैप्टर एप्लीकेशंस ऑफ इलेक्ट्रोमैग्नेटिक वेव्स सो इन द प्रीवियस लेक्चर्स वी हैव स्टडीड डिफरेंट एप्लीकेशंस ऑफ इलेक्ट्रोमैग्नेटिक वेव्स लाइक माइक्रोवेव ओवन रडार पायरो इलेक्ट्रिक थर्मोमीटर एक्सरे रेडियोग्राफी एंड सी टी स्कैंस सो इन द टूडेज लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी द एप्लीकेशन ऑफ इलेक्ट्रोमैग्नेटिक वेव्स एज सोलर सेल्स सो वी नो द वॉट आर इलेक्ट्रोमैग्नेटिक वेव्स राइट सो वी नो द इलेक्ट्रोमैग्नेटिक वेव्स आर वेव्स दैट आर क्रिएटेड एज अ रिजल्ट ऑफ वाइब्रेशन बिटवीन एन इलेक्ट्रिक फील्ड एंड अ मैग्नेटिक फील्ड राइट इन अदर वर्ल्ड्स इलेक्ट्रोमैग्नेटिक वेव्स आर कंपोज ऑफ ऑसोलेटिंग मैग्नेटिक एंड इलेक्ट्रिक फील्ड्स राइट सो दिस इज टिपिकल इलेक्ट्रोमैग्नेटिक स्पेक्ट्रम राइट सो इन साइड वी हैव डिफरेंट वेव्स दे आर अरेंज विद द इंक्रीजिंग वेव लेंथ और इंक्रीजिंग फ्रिक्वेंसी राइट सो वी आर कंसर्न विद द विजिबल रीजन सो विजिबल रीजन दैट फॉल्स बिटवीन यू वी एंड आई आर रेडिएशन राइट सो दिस स्मॉल पार्ट ऑफ द रेडिएशन that is called as visible spectrum it it is because it is visible to our eyes right it 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 is stand between 400 to 700 nanometers right in wavelength so uh, we are studying the application of this electromagnetic waves that is solar cell so let us study the principle of solar cell so solar cell converts light energy into an electrical energy a solar cell is basically a pn junction diode conversion of light energy in electrical energy is based on a phenomenon called as photovoltaic effect the working of a solar cell solely depends upon its photovoltaic effect hence a solar cell also known as photovoltaic cell when semiconductor materials are exposed to light then some of the photons of light ray are absorbed by the semiconductor crystals which causes a significant number of free electrons in the crystal this is the basic reason for producing electricity due to photovoltaic effect photovoltaic cell is the basis basic unit of the system where the photovoltaic effect is utilized to produce electricity from light energy the name photovoltaic is because of their voltage producing capability the semiconductor materials like arsenide indium cadmium silicon selenium and gallium are used for making the pv cells mostly silicon and selenium are used for making the cell so let us study the construction of solar cell so we have this solar cell Uh, right so we have a p, p type and n type material and inside we have a pn junction junction right on the front on the n type side we have front metal electrode or uh, metal fingers are placed where sun light sunlight will incident on this uh, material right and we have back metal conductor uh, coating on the outside of this pn junction right so electric uh, field uh, will be measured at the um, we can say two electrodes so n type and p type so two electrodes are attached and we we have applied load right so where we can measure the voltage produced right it is basically a junction diode but construct constructionally it is little bit different from conventional pn junction diode a very thin layer of a n type semiconductor less than 1 micrometer thick is grown on a relatively thicker p type semiconductor more than 100 micrometer thick so that on the p type semiconductor a very thin layer of uh, n type semiconductor material is grown right we call this bottom layer as base of the cell we provide few finer electrodes Uh, on the uh, top of the n type semiconductor layer the electrodes do not obstruct light to reach the thin n layer right just below the n type layer there is a pn junction the depletion region is created at the junction of these two layers due to immobile ions right so we know the uh, just like in, inside a diode we have a depletion region 
we have we also provide a current collecting electrodes at the bottom of the p type layer this acts as their positive and negative output terminals right we encapsulate the entire assembly by thin glass to protect the solar cell from any mechanical shock right so this is particular construction so let us now move to the working of solar cell right so this is a typical pn junction of the solar cell right so this is uh, p type layer which is uh, large uh, compared to the n type layer so n type layer is very thin and that is mounted over the p type material so this is pn junction uh, there so uh, deflection region will be there at the pn junction right so when uh, so we have the uh, electrical contacts uh, so we have this uh, uh, one electrode here and another electron is electrode is here right so electron hole uh, so when the photon will be incident on this material so the photon will be absorbed in the in depletion zone so electron hole creation will be there inside this depletion zone so these holes they will be attracted towards the uh, <coughs> we can say the cathode and electrons will be attracted towards the anode right so we will be having uh, when it is switch on the, there will be current flow or electron flow inside the uh, this material right uh, inside the outer electrical circuit right so while sunlight fall on the cell and when light reaches the pn junction the light photons can easily enter into the junction through very thin n type layer the light energy in the form of photons supplies sufficient energy to the junction to create a number of electron hole pairs the incident light breaks the thermal equilibrium condition of the junction the free electrons in the depletion region can quickly come to the n type side of the junction similarly the holes in the depletion can quickly come to the p type side of the junction once the newly created free electrons come to the n type side cannot further cross the junction because of barrier potential of the junction when the light photon will be incident on the n type material that uh, absorbed photon will pass to the depletion region where uh, the electron hole pair will be created right so these um, uh, electrons they will be attracted towards the n type side and the uh, um, photon uh, holes they will go to the p side of the junction right and there will be uh, we can say uh, <coughs> a potential barrier will be produced at the junction and therefore electrons they cannot go on the p side directly right so these electrons they will pass from the outer circuit right similarly the newly created holes once come to the p type side cannot further cross the junction because of the same barrier potential of the junction as the concentration of electrons become higher in one side that is the n type side of the junction and concentration of holes become more in another side that is the p type side of the junction the pn junction will behave like a small battery cell right that means there will be more uh, electrons will be produced and they will be uh, they will be uh, concentrated in the n side right and holes will be concentrated on p side that means a voltage will set up uh, which is known as photovoltage in this way a potential difference is, is established between two sides of the cell and if these two sides are con connected by an external load current will start flowing from positive to negative terminal of the cell this was basic working principle of solar cell right right what is the principle uh, principle of solar cell that means when the photons they will be incident on this uh, n type material they will go to the this depletion region on the in, inside the depletion region the electron hole pair will be produced the electrons they will go to the n, n type side and phot holes will be go to the p type side and they will be collected they will be assembled in, inside the uh, this region right so electron will be they will concentrated inside the n type region and holes will be concentrated in the p type region they cannot go from one side to another side because there will be barrier potential uh, at the junction right when, uh, when enough electrons and uh, holes are we produced on the both sides we can say this is uh, <coughs> this is just like a battery right when we apply the uh, external uh, load to this uh, cell then the current will be pr produced right so this is the flow of electrons and current will be opposite direction right so current will be like this so in the opposite to the direction of 
electrons so when electrons they will flow from one this on this side the holes will flow from this side right that means the current will flow in the uh, direction of holes and that is opposite to the electron flow right so this is the working of solar cell so what are the parameters important for the solar cell or photovoltaic cell so these are some parameters that we'll see so during choosing a particular solar cell for specific project it is essential to know the parameters of a solar panel these parameters tell us how efficiently a solar cell can convert the light to electricity so let us study the first parameter that is iv characteristics of solar cell iv means current voltage characteristics so this is typical iv characteristics on one axis we have the current and another axis we have voltage and the current voltage characteristics are plotted right so this is uh, on this side we have the current y axis we have current and x axis we have voltage so we can see here voc and isc is there right so the uh, and this graph uh, of current voltage curve is like this that will it will intersect the current axis at isc and it will intersect the uh, voltage axis at voc so voc means open circuit voltage that means this is the maximum voltage that the solar cell provide when the terminals are not connected to any load right so when the terminals are not connected to any load then we will get the open circuit voltage that means the circuit will be open right there will be no load applied to the solar cell and that corresponding voltage is called as voc or open circuit voltage right so this is open circuit condition whereas the isc means the current will be flow that means maximum current will be flow when the uh, two terminals they are short when we will short the two terminals of the solar cell then maximum current will be flowing right so it is called as isc that means short circuit current the maximum current provided by the solar cell when the output connectors are shorted together a short circuit condition right so in that case the current if we measure the current that current is called as isc or short circuit current right there is another point in this graph and this point is called as maximum power point or pm or mpp so this is called as maximum power point that means this related to the point where the maximum power supplied by the cell that is connected to the load that is batteries or inverters it is its maximum value that means this maximum power is given by im into vm where this im and vm are the values of current and uh, voltage corresponding to the maximum power that means the product of this im into vm will give us maximum power that maximum power is can be also be founded found by measuring the area uh, bounded by this curve right so this uh, particular uh, square or rectangle we have plotted so the area if you measure the area the maximum area gives us maximum power right so we can have pl plot for this um, uh, we, if we take this point and if, if we have the rectangular like this so we can measure the area of, uh, bounded by this rectangle and we can measure the particular power right uh, value for that particular im and vm values but i and v values but for the maximum value of this power we will get for i m and v m right so that is called as maximum power i m is the current and v m is the voltage at maximum power point is shown in the v i characteristics of the solar cell the maximum power point of a solar cell is measured in watts that means w or peak watts that means pico watts or peak watts so w p right another characteristic of solar cell is fill factor the fill factor is the relationship between the maximum power that the solar cell can actually provide under normal operating conditions and the product of open circuit voltage times the short circuit current right so voc into isc this fill factor value gives an idea of the quality of the cell and the closer the fill factor is to one that is unity the more power the cell can provide that is typical values are between 0.7 to 0.8 right so fill factor of solar cell is defined as 
field factor is equal to maximum power output upon ideal power right so maximum power output that we give, get pm right so maximum power output we get pm so pm is the product of vm into im and ideal power means the product of voc into ic is called as <coughs> voc is the open circuit voltage and ic is the short circuit current that their product will give us the voc into ic so the, we will get the field factor of the solar cell and typical value that falls in between 0.7 to 0.8 but <coughs> if it is close to 1 that is that means the quality of the solar cell is better where voc is the open circuit and is is the short circuit current that we know right another factor in the solar cell is efficiency right the efficiency of a solar cell is the ratio between the maximum output power that the solar cell can produce compared to the amount of solar radiance hitting the cell the efficiency of a typical solar cell is normally low at around 10 to 12 percent depending on the type of cell whether it is monocrystalline, polycrystalline, amorphous or thin beam being used. So efficiency it is uh, uh, shown by nita which is equal to P out upon P in. So we, we can write the above equation as P out is equal to Vm into Im which is equal to field factor into VOC into ISE. Right? So this is output power right and therefore the efficiency of the solar cell is p out upon p in so output power we can uh, measure so output power is equal to maximum power right so pm into v i m so which is equal to a field factor into voc into isc upon input power so p in is the input power that is depend on the radiation <coughs> so we have different types of solar cells one is amorphous silicon solar cell or ASI, we have biohybrid solar cell, cadmium telluride solar cell, CDTE concentrated PV cells, copper indium gallium selenide solar cells, uh, crystalline uh, silicon solar cells, uh, disynthesized solar cells, gallium arsenide germanium solar cells, uh, we have hybrid solar cells, luminescent solar concentrated cells, monochromatic solar cells. Uh, multi-junction solar cells, non-crystalline solar cells, organic solar cells, perovskite solar cells, photoelectric chemical solar cells, uh, plasmonic solar cells, polycrystalline solar cells, quantum dot solar cells, solid state solar cells, thin film solar cells. So we have various types of these solar cells. So we will see some of the types. So let us study the first silicon solar cells. So majority of the solar cells on the market today are made up of some type of silicon by some estimates 90% of the solar cells are made of silicon. However, silicon can take many different forms, variations are almost uh, distinguished by the purity of the silicon. Purity is the sense in the way in which the silicon modules are aligned. The greater the purity of the silicon molecules, the more efficient the solar cell is at converting sunlight into electricity. The majority of silicon based solar cells on the market about 95 percent are comprised of crystalline silicon making this the most common type of solar cell. There are two types of crystalline that is monocrystalline and polycrystalline. Monocrystalline silicon solar cells were uh, also called as single crystalline cells are easily recognizable by their coloring monocrystalline solar cells are the most efficient of all efficiencies have been documented at upward uh, of 20 percent monocrystalline solar cells are almost also the most space efficient right another advantages of monocrystalline cells is that they are also large last the longest of all types Many manufacturers offer warrant, uh, warranties of up to 25 years on these types of PV systems. Monocrystalline cells are the most expensive of all solar cells. So from uh, an investment standpoint, polycrystalline and thin film cells are often the preferred choice of consumers, right? Because of their high cost, the monocrystalline solar cells, they are less used. We use polycrystalline solar cells. 
सो पॉलीक्रिस्टलाइन सोलर सेल्स ऑल्सो नोन एज पॉलीसिलिकॉन और मल्टी सिलिकॉन सेल्स वे आर द फर्स्ट सोलर सेल्स यू वर इंट्रोड्यूस टू द इंडस्ट्री इन नाइनटीन एटी वन सेल्स डू नॉट गो थ्रू द कटिंग प्रोसेस यूज फॉर मोनोक्रिस्टलाइन सेल्स इंस्टेड द सिलिकॉन इज मेल्टेड एंड पॉर्ड इन टू ए स्क्वेयर मोल्ड हेंस द स्क्वेयर शेप ऑफ द पॉलीक्रिस्टलाइन In this way, they are they are much more affordable since hardly uh, any silicon is wasted during the manufacturing process, right? However, polycrystalline is less efficient than its monocrystalline, tip, right? Typically, polycrystalline solar PV systems operated at thirteen to sixteen percent efficiency. Again, this is due to the fact that the material has a lower purity. Due to this re reality. polycrystalline is less space efficient as well one another drawback one other drawback of polycrystalline is that has a low lower heat tolerance than monocrystalline which means they don't perform as efficiently in high temperatures all right let us move to another type that is thin film solar cells in the thin film solar cell uh, with growth rates of around 60% between 2002 to 2007 By 2011, the high time, the thin film solar cell industry represented approximately 5% of the sale of the markets. While many variations of uh, thin film products exist, they typically achieve efficiencies uh, of 7 to 13%. However, a lot of research and development is being put into this thin film. Thin film solar cells are characterized by the mat. nor in which various types of semi conducting materials including silicon in some cases are layered on top of one another to create a series of thin films the major drawback of thin film technologies is their most uh, mass production is uh, much uh, easier than uh, much easier than crystalline based modules so the cost of mass producing thin film solar cell is relatively cheap product itself is also flexible in nature which is leading to many new applications of solar technologies scenarios where having some type of flexible material is advantageous one major drawback is that thin film technologies required a lot of space thin film technology using various photovoltaic substances including amorphous silicon are being developed so let us move to the amorphous silicon solar cells so thin film solar cells made of of amorphous silicon are traditionally used for small scale applications including things like packet pocket calculators travel lights and camping gear uh, used in remote locations a new process called stacking that involves creating multiple layers of amorphous silicon cells have resulted in higher rates of efficiency up to 8% for these technologies however it's still fairly expensive then we have another uh, solar cell that is cadmium telluride or cdt uh, solar cell it is uh, the only of the thin film materials that have been cost competitive and with crystalline silicon models in fact in recent years some cadmium models have surpassed surpassed them in terms of their cost effectiveness efficiency levels result in a range of 9 to 11% then we have the copper indium gallium selenide solar cells or copper cu ion ga sc solar cells they have demonstrated the most promise with uh, respect to their efficiency levels than range from 10 to 12% somewhat comparable to crystalline technologies the technology is most used in larger or commercial applications so we'll see the applications of solar cells so solar cells are used to convert light source from the sun into electrical energy <coughs> this is environment friendly and saves resources therefore they are mounted on roofs of houses industries cost effective way to provide power to remote area solar cells are used in power farms to provide electricity to large areas solar cells used in vehicles like cars buses etc helps to save non renewable fuel solar power solar power is used in space vehicles such as satellites and telescopes so in summary we have studied different applications of 
various types of electromagnetic waves so we have studied the solar cell their principal construction and working of solar cells we have also studied the iv characteristics of solar cells field factor and efficiency we have also studied different types of solar cells and their uses right in this way our fifth chapter is finished so thank you